YouTube, what's going on? It's your favorite apologist back. The atheist killer with another pet. Uh, another atheist has officially been owned and now lives in my zoo. Uh, after about a two hour and 40 minute debate, self ownage really just breaks your heart. I mean, seriously, is this the best that the atheist community has to offer? <laughs> what a joke. Uh, first of all, the reason that this particular debate lasted so long was because the guy I was debating could not stay focused. It was like debating a 12-year-old or somebody that's on LSD or something. First, he had no idea what the Elliot argument even was. He was totally unprepared, and honestly, I should have ended the debate before we even started. But I chose, me being me, the atheist killer, I chose to destroy him anyways. After I schooled him and gave him a quick rundown of the actual argument itself, he could not decide which premise he wanted to debunk or attack. He kept jumping back and forth. First it was premise two, then premise one, then back to premise two. He just kept doing this back and forth. And the little game started to get old really, really quick. Even his own atheist buddies who were watching the debate started to get annoyed with him. They started to leave the room because he wasn't defeating my argument, but rather just talking around in circles. It was really quite pathetic. But I remained focused and steady just to make him look more stupid than he already was. Of course, that's what I do, right? So, anyways... The dude's name is Vic Mackey 24. You may have heard of him. I had never heard of him. After I owned him, well, he owned himself. You'll find that out in a minute. But I looked him up, and apparently he had lost a few other debates to other people. Anyway, uh, the main points of my exchange with him went like this. I tried to explain to him that the Elliott argument itself actually makes no claims about the existence or validity of the UC option. However, it is inferred by the argument that the UC is the rational, logical choice, as opposed to the other two. For example, there is an argument for the existence of the UC on its own, which goes like this. Premise number one, something cannot come from pure nothingness. Premise number two, infinite regress is illogical. Therefore, the only rational and logical choice for the existence of the universe is an uncreated creator. Also, the UC option is rational and logical as opposed to STE because the UC, the UC does not face the problem of infinite regress. And the UC option is rational and logical as opposed to SCP NCEU because the UC is not pure nothingness. The UC is an all powerful, all knowing personal mind which creates. After I beat this into his tiny skull for about an hour or more, he decided to move on. Whew, finally. Dude is crazy, man. He then claimed he had a third option. He wanted to show that my, op my uh, argument was a false dichotomy, which many before him have tried to do. So he said he had a third option that was not STE or SCP-NCU. He said his third option was the same as the UC option, except his option did not have a personal mind. I said, yeah, yeah, bro, that's STE. <laughs> and that option is irrational and illogical and has no evidence. I told him the reason the UC option is different than STE is because the UC is timeless and has a personal mind, while his option does not. He repeatedly said his option was also timeless. My response, really? If that's true, Mr. Vicky, then give me a step-by-step -step process of how your timeless third option, without a personal mind, created our physical universe. And here came the self-ownage and the end of our debate. He said his third option, this was his answer, he said his third option randomly spits out random forces or laws which create universes. <laughs> oh, man. And right there in that statement, after two hours and 40-some minutes, he admitted his option was not timeless at all because events were actually happening. And to top it off, he could not understand why that would be irrational or illogical. 
I tried to tell him that since his option was not timeless and did not have a personal mind, that it faced the problems of infinite regress. I tried to tell him, if you have no starting point for time, and your eternal force is just spinning out universes at random during the past eternity, then our universe would have already came into being at some point in the past eternity. Yet, here it is, and here we are, today. So, what happened next? What happened next? Man, he ran off and quit. Yes, he quit. He couldn't fight this argument, and he knew he was owned and had killed his own attempt at debunking the argument, all by his little lonely self by answering a simple question. Self-ownage. It's sad, man. So he ran away like the little girl he is, and he quit. But now, he lives in my zoo. He's another one of my pets. Dick Mackey, deuce foe, 20, oh man, come on, man. And lastly, I just want to say this before I'm out of here. I still don't think that this guy gets it, you know. Some people are purposely dishonest, but I really think that this dude is just stupid. I really don't think he gets it. So if someone please could for me, uh, email him, maybe in a sixth grade language or something, explain to him why it's illogical and irrational have to have an eternal force without a personal mind that creates as opposed to a timeless eternal mind that creates. <laughs> wow. I'll see you all soon, man. I'm out. AK. Peace.